Hi, we Bob here, and in this video we are going to be talking about how to achieve these types of results in Rebel 5. I have been experimenting all week, trying to follow some traditional watercolour tutorials, and it hasn't been as easy to achieve the effects I was really hoping for. So having been through all these trials, I figured I would share my results, uh, give you the tips and tricks to help you on your digital art journey. So tip one is you need to choose the right canvas as it has an effect on the way the water simulation works as illustrated and how the texture of some of your work will turn out. I did fail to realise this early in my trials as the person doing the watercolour tutorial I was watching had been using a paper which have, it would have a similar texture to that of hot pressed um, and therefore when I changed to using this it started to be easier to achieve the same effects that they had been achieving in the real world. Tip two as I think we need to realise that as things exist just now, it isn't really possible to directly copy the way traditional art works in the digital world. And that can be a bit of a pain because you've maybe came from a traditional background and you're trying to use the same techniques and they can be close and I think we're getting closer. Therefore, during your watercolour painting in Rebel 5, I would encourage you to pause the water simulation or use the keyboard shortcuts, which for me, is the letter D that will pause the water colour simulation. This gives us time to just relax, set out the water and the water levels to what we think and see what we get. It's always possible to just experiment and I will show you a really amazing result I achieved later in this video just from experimentation. Okay, so let's look at our first painting which is this painting. And how did we get the effect of the cloud and the water on the beach? Firstly, we wet the layer and then choose a bristle brush. Keep an eye on the watercolour properties panel throughout this video and also the visual settings panel throughout the video as they will make all the difference to the effects we can get. As you can see with about 40% water and a layer wet we can get a decent wash type effect but we are trying to achieve dark areas and light areas. So the first experiment was to limit the water to this area alone of this cloud rather than wetting the full layer. Using the dry brushes, we can add texture to our paintings as illustrated. This gives us a cool effect and it certainly could be used for a forest type scene. The issue we have though is we're trying to get a cloud type shape and have softer edges. The only method I could rely on early in my experiments and as a valuable method to use is the airbrush as a blender as illustrated which will allow you to smooth out some of your painting and some of those hard edges. So tip three is use the airbrush in blending mode to smooth out the areas as required. Just don't overuse it. The next issue we now have is that we have our cloud but no wash in the background. Normally in traditional watercolour we would lay down the wash first and we will try that a bit later in this video. The problem with not doing this is that we end up covering the effect that we had a minute ago when we let the layer dry out and we end up picking up all that colour and ruining the effect that we've already achieved. So the next experiment was that the orange colour was too bold and I was looking for more of a lighter orange background. So using a high water and white or low opacity and at the same time having the rewet slider high we can get this cool effect. We can just now use our airbrush blending technique to smooth out and blend some of the areas together. We add in the beach and water below the horizon line, so in this experiment um, our water is high and our opacity is high as well as using a textured bristle brush. Remember that we can always pause the simulation when we are happy with the result and just dry it out. At the end we add in a little boat and a wee figure, perhaps a parent holding their child while looking out into the distance. Just keep an eye on the tilt tool as well. So overall I was happy with how this one turned out as an experiment but I still wasn't achieving the real watercolour magic that I've seen traditional painters getting from, from their work. This first painting took me about 30 minutes. Therefore it was on to the next experiment. Again we are choosing the hot press texture canvas paper and a 1024 by 1024 using 200 dpi resolution which seems to work well with my PC setup. The first part of this was focusing on the clouds and using the wet brush and dry brush to get textured water on the canvas. We have then added a black paint to this and let the simulation go, again watching along to the visual settings 
as altering these mid simulation does change things and that would be tip 4 to use the visual settings to your advantage. So as you can see from this experiment there seems to always be this hard water edge moving out from a central point and that isn't always what we're looking for it sometimes can be quite frustrating so to make some changes to this I tried using the ability to blow the paint around using the icon shown. This did help make the results definitely less uniform. Tip 5 is to use a blowing tool to get some variety into your drawing. At this point I was feeling some frustration as I wasn't getting the results I truly was trying to capture and tip 6 in this series is potentially the game changer you have been looking for. It certainly seemed to be quite game changing for me during this process and it gave me some seriously good results closer to what I was trying to achieve. This feature of Rebel 5 is the brush creator and more specifically the brush shape. We can simply get another layer, lay down a brush shape and then make a new brush as shown on the screen. This can be a normal brush, a water brush, a dry brush and it will help us get some of the textures we are looking for. In this example I have made a rain type shape and later in this video I will show you some of the other brushes that I created. In the brush creator settings we can set our shape to change rotation for example which can give us some really interesting results. There is a whole bunch of things we can do. In this case there could be a spiky barricade in the distance or some alien type mountains. I will attempt to do an in-depth brush creation video next time um, or in a few weeks as there is so much to cover. Just know that if you're not getting the results you want then get into this panel and start experimenting. Tip 7 is another great thing to try and that is to double up your layers. Once you've got the stage you like and you duplicate your layer, this is what I do anyway, you can see that it sometimes just makes the colours pop and if you find this and want to keep those bolder colours just duplicate your layer once or twice and then merge them as shown on the screen. Tip 8 and one I have covered previously is that if you hold down the shift key you will get the ruler tool which allows us to draw those nice straight horizon lines. Remember if drawing objects in water usually they will have a direct reflection in the water. Sometimes the waves will distort it but it is a reflection um, down onto the water. The second experiment here took about 25 minutes to complete. The third experiment was really focusing on getting the nice bold sky colours and a smooth kind of interlacing of those colours to give a nice looking sky, nice sunset, a nice sunrise. So as a side note, if you click the water icon and you cannot see the water, there is a little icon as illustrated for turning on and off the visual display of the water. As a second side note, sometimes I do get glitches in the water simulation on Rebel 5. It may just be my computer. If you get these, I would suggest saving your work and restarting the application but sometimes they resolve themselves, sometimes not. In our experiment here we have added a watery purple and it is doing the uniform wave coming from a central point. So again using the below function we can really get some nice results. Just remember to keep an eye on whether granulation and water drips is turned on or off. Sometimes you forget these are on and they give you results that maybe you're not looking for. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing for me. It was a bad thing because I was trying to get some nice uh, transitions. As you can see though, we have achieved some amazing results here. Keep your eyes on the visual settings as mentioned. I messed a bit around with the sky a bit later in this painting and sort of lost some of the magic that I achieved in my first go. So tip 9 is just duplicate your layer at stages. An example of the glitching is shown here. It does tend to happen when I have the tilt at full strength. You can see some of the granulation effects we have achieved here as well in this experiment and that's not a glitch though. And this painting took about 30 minutes to get to this stage. In this final experiment the end result was completely different as sometimes the magic of Rebel 5 simulation just gives us a drawing without us really trying to go any references. You just might see something in your brain, something on the screen pops into your brain and you see something. So tip 10 is when experimenting look around at the shapes that are forming and see if you can visualise something unintentional. A final tip is coming up for those that have Rebel 5 Pro and it is a tip that I was given by someone who watches the channel and kindly left a comment. If the video has been of use please hit the like button. Thank you very much for the thousand subscribers. It was so much appreciated and thank you to everyone who has been watching along. As you can see using the various tools we have discussed we can achieve some really brilliant results but as you can see I have some glitching going on again here. Please remember though that when I'm making these videos I have Rebel 5 open, I'm recording in OBS 
Sometimes I'm doing the second recording with the, the Rebel 5 time-lapse capture. I've got references on other screens. So I've got many programs running at once, which then will detract from Rebel 5 having the full power of my computer. But moving on, using big bold colours and messing around with the visual settings, we can almost get this tie-dye t-shirt look. But for me, this is when the shapes and objects appear in some of these experiments. In this case, my brain initially saw a planet, a kind of alien planet, and we're standing on another planet in a kind of mountainous region with this big kind of blue planet on the horizon. After some extra water experiments, my brain then went to a big eye and a fiery pit below. There was also this bridge shape that I could see and I wanted to do something in that area. Initially though, it was making an eye, which I did cover some of the aspects of doing that in my last video and other videos on my channel. Another tool that I used here will We'll make that tip 11 is to try out the smudge tool. This is what I've used to pull the black out from the pupil, pushing it in the directions that I want it to go in and it gives this nice smudging effect as the name of the tool would suggest. On the bridge we have drawn a wee guy just looking up at the stars. The final water experiment on this example was to use complementary orange colour and tilt fully up with drips and granulation on. I liked this effect, but then I realised I had erased my little character, so I had to revert back to one of my previously saved stages. So take note of the layers we're using here, as this orange was in a completely different layer. This is where we can quickly talk about the pigment button shown here. I did know about this button, but I wasn't entirely sure what it really meant. Now this is unique to Rebel 5 as far as I'm aware, and it comes from a third party and a code called Mixbox. What this basically does is gives us more realistic mixing colours compared to any other digital painting programme, again, that I'm aware of. Correct me in the comments if I'm incorrect on that. Where when mixing colours, we tend to go very muddy and grey, and I found that in Sketchbook Pro. I've talked about it again in previous videos to do with blending. So I believe this is called RGB mixing. Well, Mixbox have developed this code and it's included in this pigment button. As you can see in the experiment, the green colours which are coming through as the orange hits the blue. I'm definitely going to be using this feature more. Thanks to Lanaya Kies, sorry if I've pronounced that wrong, um, I'm not very good at that sort of stuff, but thank you very much for giving me this new information and that's where comments on videos really do help. So tip 12 is to use Rebel 5 Pro, check out the pigmentation button. Do know that this removes some of the features I mentioned in a previous video around opaque, semi-transparent and transparent. That video where I discussed that is up in the corner and we'll show you some further watercolour features. There is other videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and we Bob is out.